to Legally Speaking with me, Tarun Nangia. When we recently did a series on Justice Dhananjay Jashwan Chandrachur, this is before he took over as the Chief Justice of India, we titled that series Hope. There was a lot of hope and which seems to be translating into reality. We saw what decision he took with regards to the listing of bails before the Supreme Court of India, where every bench will hear 10 bail matters. That is indeed a big development and boosts investor confidence in India. For investors looking at India from the standpoint of faster dispute resolution, bail is one of the basic tenets. If you're booked under some case, you should have a right to a faster hearing. And we know this is a country where Many times lower courts are reluctant to give bail. And interestingly, Justice Chandrachud even took up that issue. And that is why we see that when the Chief Justice of India puts, uh, in a sense, all his attention to such crucial issues, there is a trickle-down effect even to the judiciary at the district level. I have a very eminent panel to discuss this decision of Justice Chandrachud with me. May I welcome Senior Advocate Saurabh Kirpal, one of the leading lawyers of India, who is practicing at the Supreme Court and various other forums. Good to see you, Mr. Kirpal, and thank you so much for your time. I have with me uh, Advocate Saket Sikri, who practices at the Delhi High Court and the Supreme Court of India. Good to see you, Saket. Uh, I have with me Advocate Neharika Karanjawala. She is, uh, part, uh, she is with Karanjawala and Company and always brings in a unique standpoint from, uh, she represents one of the leading law firms of India at the Supreme Court. Good to see you, Neharika. And at the outset, may I request in the first two and a half minutes, if Senior Advocate Saurav Kirpal could lay the ground before we move ahead, over to you, Mr. Kirpal. Uh, thanks, Tarun. Uh, you know, one of the biggest problems, both from economic and a humanitarian point, is the fact that a vast majority of the people in our country, the prison population is under trials. Now, it obviously has a deleterious economic impact because as we would discuss in many shows in the past, uh, if businessmen are hounded and are put in behind bars and don't get bail, they can't do their work. The fear also of constantly having, possibly going behind bar has a chilling effect. So it's very important for people to be uh, released quickly on, on bail. Now, obviously, if someone's guilty, you'll arrest them. But what's important is our jurisprudence always was jail, bail, not jail. But in the last uh, few decades, we've seen that completely flip on its head. And we've seen the rule of uh, bail, not jail is just, uh, it's only, these are only words. Every once in a while, the Supreme Court comes and makes a statement, gives a judgment. But that has not actually happened in practice. So it's a very welcome development, what Justice Chandrachud has said for two reasons. One, it shows that there is a judicial priority in uh, decision-making on matters of personal liberty, right? So in the uh, since a lot of the trial courts are not don't give bail, it's true, it's a well-known fact. Uh, even the high courts increasingly do, do not give bail. So it is now the Supreme Court which has become the court, court of last resort to get bail. So that, that's a very important thing that people will now get bail because these matters will be listed. But the other important thing is a message will hopefully percolate down the system saying that the Chief Justice of India thinks matters of personal liberty are of utmost important, um, importance. And not just the Chief Justice of India. I must point out that even recently, Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul, who is the senior most judge of the Supreme Court, so the J1, CJ and the J1, have, uh, have stressed that bail should be granted as a matter of course. It has become too common, Tarun, to say that these are matters of... Uh, uh, economy and uh, there's an impact on the e economic fabric of our country and therefore deny bail. Well, the presumption of innocence also has a certain meaning. The uh, ease of doing business also has to have a meaning in our in our country. So I am uh, really looking forward to this new regime. It puts the truly important uh, job of the Supreme Court, which is a custodian of our fundamental rights, a custodian of personal liberty, a custodian of freedom back on the forefront. Thank you so much for that opening comment. I'll go across to Advocate Saket Sikri for his opening comment. Thanks, thanks, Tarun, for having me over on the show. Uh, I couldn't agree more with Saurabh, the way he has put it. It has always been, as a law student, as lawyers, way back in 1980, the Supreme Court wrote, bail is a rule and jail is an exception. Unfortunately for trial courts, more so for trial courts, it is just the reverse. I, in my experience, have hardly seen trial courts and with great respect to every uh, member of the judicial fraternity in the trial court, I've hardly seen them granting bails. And it is more so in economic offenses. 
especially in economic offenses. The, the sheer figure of, of the magnitude of, uh, of, uh, of the offense in terms of cheating, etc. These are more intimidating factors for them rather than actually going to the basic law of bail. Now, way back uh, in the Sanjay Chandra judgment, which is a very famous rule, uh, landmark judgment on bail, certain criteria were laid down. Each time we go to a trial court, cite that judgment, I, sometimes it feels that you know for the trial court, it's really on the papers. They, they really don't follow with great respect. And as a routine, these matters travel to the high court and occasionally we get bails from the high court. But I agree with Saurabh there also, even in the high court, it's not... It's not, uh, you know, the, the norm of granting bail on the basic parameters at many occasions. And finally, the matter is reached to the Supreme Court. Why should a matter that involves personal liberty should even travel to the Supreme Court? Now, while we are in Delhi, of course, but imagine these matters are traveling from all over the country. So this move by the Honorable Chief Justice of India to list these bail matters is a welcome move. Of course, I Go back to the show that we did when uh, Honorable Justice Chandrachur was taking over as the Chief Justice of India, and we used the words as hope. We all were excited. There was a sense of euphoria. And I think as the time is going on in less than a month of his taking over, his message of how personal liberty is important and not just a message to list these matters on priority, divided it in, amongst all the benches of the court, also a message to the judges of the trial court, district courts, that please do not hesitate in granting bail. Do not refuse to grant a bail only because you feel you may be targeted. Now, these are very important messages coming from the top person, from right up to the, you know, it'll percolate it down. And I hope this message, putting the bail matters in the Supreme Court, this message will go down to the high courts and certainly to the trial courts. And I really hope... Uh, you know, this change comes about. And of course, taking forward, you also did a show on the judgment by Justice uh, Sanjay Kishan call on that until where there was Amaika. This, you know, those judgments, it is, it is worth reading that judgment where two thirds of inmates are under trials. Now, in a, in a society where Article 21 is embedded, should we have two thirds of inmates as under trials? It, 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 it's something that really needed attention and coming down from the apex court from the Chief Justice is really welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saket Sikri, for your opening comment. I'll go across to Niharika Karanjawala from Karanjawala and Company. You know, ma'am, uh, the law firm you represent is one of India's leading law firms at the Supreme Court. Uh, you would routinely represent these high-value clients. Uh, and India co companies are promoter-driven. So when you put them in jail, the whole business collapses. Uh, could you also share your input uh, on this decision by Justice Dhananjay Chandrachut? So I certainly agree with you, Tarun, as I do, of course, with both Saket and Saurabh, sir. This is an extremely welcome viewpoint to the uh, jurisprudence of bail. And uh, as you said, with regards to businessmen, I feel that there will be a long standing effect of that because if India comes to be seen as a country where one doesn't have to fear that they will be leapt upon uh, for uh, you know economic offenses, even maybe slightly lower grade economic offenses by several different agencies. Like, for example, in economic offenses cases, you have several agencies that come into play. You can have the EOW, you can have the ED, each of which has a right to run in and arrest you. So if India is seen uh, internationally as well as this country where you might just be dragged into the jails, thrown in next to murderers and everybody else, and then never ever let out again, that does certainly have a negative effect on the way things are seen. So certainly I feel like this kind of viewpoint will have significant benefits to way, towards the way in which businesses view India in the future. I also wanted to speak for a moment on just the excitement uh, in the short term that such a view would uh, bring up, you know, and I feel that both Justice Chandrachur's comments as well as his action of setting uh, 10 bail cases per day addresses three critical issues that face bail jurisprudence today. One of which is just the sheer volume of bail cases that are pending in the courts. Two is the fear of backlash faced by the lower judiciary, which we have to acknowledge is a very real thing. And three is the fact that many prosecutors today are by default opposed 
to bail. It's almost a default position that if you go in there and support the notion of somebody getting bail, you will have fingers pointed at you as well. And this is from the perspective of fear of backlash. Now, with this welcome view that Justice Chandrachur is taking in with this new listing system where 10 cases will be listed per day, we are quickly eating into the number of cases that will be left pending, you know, so one can immediately see the benefit that something like that would bring. When it comes to the question of the trickle-down effect and the larger message being sent out, I think that, in fact, will have the greatest impact on the situation of bail in the months and years to come. Because a sort of unspoken issue till now has been the lower court's fear of backlash and retribution from the general public, which is a big thing. The advent of social media and the manner in which especially high profile cases are projected in the mainstream media as well, whips the public into a frenzy of sort. The viewpoint that the public is taking. Now, if I can give a small example for, of what I saw on Twitter, Commenting on the Aftar Punawala case just yesterday, somebody had uh, put up a tweet naming the lawyer that has been supplied to him by legal aid, saying that, implying that this is the real villain in the piece. And why are we going after other people when these are the people that, be, uh, that should be sought out? So, you know, when you have this sort of angry, seething notion where even the lawyers of uh, criminal defendants are attacked, where judges are attacked when they are granted bail, where there is immediately uh, where there is immediately a doubt cast on their reputations and their honesty if they let high profile, especially people out of jail, you will automatically have a situation where there will be a hesitancy to grant people bail. And in the lower judiciary, as Justice Chandrachur noted, there is a lot of intelligence and fairness and justice in the lower judiciary, but in any innately human system as a judiciary is, there will be fears such as this. And the fact that the highest judicial office in the land is acknowledging this to be a genuine problem, I think will have perhaps the best impact on bail jurisprudence. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take forward I'll what just, I'd just like to, I'll just like to uh, not to interject, but you know, just to one very interesting point Neharika made was that the public prosecutors in the system are auto-tuned to oppose bail. That is so beautifully put. You know, a public prosecutor is an essential wing in the criminal judicial, uh, criminal justice delivery system. He is an officer of the court. Now, what has happened is that it has become uh, a norm. At any stage you go to seek a bail, and whether it's a stage uh, after charge sheet, before charge sheet, supplementary charge sheet, depending upon whichever stage, the prosecutor will have to necessarily oppose a bail. Now, this uh, very interesting point she made, which none of us made earlier, was that this prosecutor part also, I think the message will percolate down. It is it is a prosecutor who's an officer of the court and should also support the cause if there actually a bail is made out. Anyway, go, go ahead. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Sakesh, for that intervention. I'll go across to senior advocate Saurabh Kirpal. Um, Mr. Kirpal, you represent many high-value clients at the Supreme Court of India. While you interact with promoters, what is the sentiment like when the news goes that, you know, it is difficult to get bail for months and sometimes years, even for the big industrialists who run companies, uh, do you think it affects the investment climate in India and why what Justice Chandrachud has done is a big boost for the economic, uh, in a sense, environment is this country because, uh, because of the sheer number of bail applications that will be heard and also a message that he sent directly to the district judiciary. Why is this good for India more than just being a judicial decision? It is a very pro-economy decision. Uh, could you explain uh, your views on what Justice Chandrachud has done for us? Dr. There are a whole host of laws that any industry has to grapple with. And in each of those laws, there is provision for criminal investigation, arrest, etc. Uh, taking at the lowest level, even matters of provident fund, uh, factories that compliances that exist at various levels and they have their own power of arrest. So the smaller industries or even the bigger industries are faced on a daily basis with these uh, multitude of laws. On top of that, has come a host of other law, uh, law, uh, agencies. So there is the ED under the PMLA, there is the SFIO, there is the CBI, 
each of whom is exercising jurisdiction over the same set of facts, with the same set of documents over one company. So the one promoter, as you said, Indian businesses are promoter driven. Or even if it is international, it's even worse because they have absolutely no clue how to deal with this uh, whole panoply of people who are running after these uh, uh, the one company. So their attention is completely diverted. If the slightest allegation is raised on a trying to avoid going to prison, if they go to prison, then trying to come out of prison. In the meanwhile, the entire management, upper management, which probably consists of either family and relative members of that promoter, or even otherwise, even in a professionally managed company, other top manage management, their focus is trying to get the person uh, out of jail or keep them out of jail. So at this point of time, the company starts suffering. Because valuable resources, and I think sometimes we forget that a large amount of resources in a, in a company is not just the capital it has in, 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 in its assets, but it's a human capital. And the top management, if they are under pressure all the time of being arrested or being investigated, they are obviously, there's a chilling factor. So they're very, very fearful. And a company which is to invest in India will ask itself that here I am going to send my particular person uh, top management from across the world and they will be answerable of this form. And look, no one has a free pass in violating the laws of our country. No one should. But the problem is that A, there's a multitude of proceedings and you're presumed often in them in a guilty until proven innocent. But more importantly, and that's pertinent to our discussion today, is that assuming for A, B, C reason, you are invested, uh, arrested by some trigger happy officer somewhere. Right? Even if the political bosses don't want it, some officer may think that this is how I will get promotion and will actually arrest you. And then trying to get bail, especially with the stringent bail conditions that exist in some of these acts, PMLA, uh, the twin conditions that we, you, we talk about, it's virtually impossible. So this has a massive economic impact on, on, on companies. I have spoken to promoters and they're fearful. Right? They, uh, they don't want to take active business decisions. And uh, of course, uh, it, it's our uh, lower courts are not helping in the matter at all by not uh, releasing people on jail. Uh, bail. It's very easy to say they're fearful of uh, some inquiries, the promotions, etc. A job of a trial court is the same as the job of a Supreme Court judge. You are supposed to dispassionately decide on the case that is before you. There are pulls and pressures upon the uh, lower judiciary, but there are pulls and pressures even at the highest level of our, of our land. Uh, there are ideological views, etc. But a training of a judge is that you raise, rise yourself above these pulls and pressures, right? So that is what is important about listing 10 cases. We don't know whether in those 10 cases that are listed before the uh, court, the judge will give bail in each of those 10 cases. No. But at the very least, it shows the priority that the court is placing on personal liberty. And the moment you say that personal liberty is important, then granting bail usually should become a matter of course. That's the point. Thanks. Thanks for that input. I'll go across to Advocate Saket Sikri. Mr. Sikri, now two things. If there is a news in the paper saying this scam is 10,000 crores, and when the chat sheet is filed, we find the scam is 50 crores. So, but when there is this news in the papers, do you think that judges are a part of society and at the district court level, they may have a, a, a sort of a chilling effect of prejudicing their minds against the accused simply because the whole media terms and a, a, a so-called scam at so many thousands of crores, which has become a routine thing these days. Whenever we see the chart sheet, the final amount is puny compared to uh, what has been out in the media. Uh, your uh, uh, views on that? Let's let's take the case of uh, 2G scam itself. It's it's a living example of uh, what really was portrayed to be the scam and what really came out of it. A, the judgment of Sanjay Chandra, where the bail was granted to Sanjay Chandra, became law and everybody was uh, uh, continues to cite clearly says, and there are there are these words in that very judgment, that the magnitude of scam, the, the number of uh, alleged amount involved in the scam, etc., should not be a criteria for a court to see or to, to should not govern a court while granting bail. It should be granted on the basic tenets of bail, the basic principles of bail. Now, this is which was engraved in the judgment way back when the judgment came. 
Ultimately, what happened? Today, you're talking about charge sheet. I completely agree when the actually the charge sheet are filed, the number is not the same as alleged. But in 2G cases where there were arrests, there was everyone was the country came under a shock, the biggest scam ever. And what exact what happened in the end, we all know. So therefore, I feel that whether it comes in the newspaper, the judges, as Saurabh rightly pointed out, are tuned and should be tuned and trained to deal with all this. You are not supposed to get influenced with what the media has to say. Now, it's it's not a jury trial in our country now, because when there is a jury trial, the members of the jury are kept away from media. That can't happen. So therefore, they will have to face all this, whether it's a newspaper article, whether it's a Twitter on the nature and the, you know, the magnitude of a scam. If these are the governing factors, then we should just keep the books of uh, law, which actually lay down the basic principle of bail out and be governed by the magnitude of scam and stop granting bails to people. That is not the, that's not the mandate of the law. That's not how it works. That's not how it's supposed to function. So as Saurabh said, judges are trained. Judges should be trained and all this should not matter. But yes, unfortunately, in reality, it does have an impact. We, we can't lose sight of the reality. It does have an impact. And like I said in my opening comment, a matter of personal liberty ideally should not travel up to the apex court. There is a need felt. There are so many cases pending, which is why 10 cases per day across the benches every day. I mean, why should so many bail cases even travel to the Supreme Court? They should be settled at the trial court, district court level, at best to the level of the high court. But the reason is that because of this reluctance in granting of bails, the matters travel to the high, or Supreme Court. So with this move, as uh, we, have, uh, we just discussed in the opening comment, that listing the bail matters, a priority is shown onto the aspects of personal liberty as to how important personal liberty is. And as Saurabh rightly said, it's not just personal liberty of the person, but if the promoters are behind bars, because most promoters today are scared, they are all looking to keep themselves out or get themselves out if somebody is arrested. Now, the resource, as he rightly said, the resource of the company is getting drained out. The legal minds or the other uh, HR management, etc., of the company are constantly looking at being on the right side of the law so that they don't commit an offense which will entail any kind of jail. And if one gets unfortunately arrested, the entire energy is focused on getting the person out. And we have seen it in recent past in so many, especially upcoming companies, etc. So many promoters have faced this consequence. Either they, some of them are still in jail, some of them are on bail. So I, again, coming back to uh, the, the move by the Chief Justice and the statement by the Chief Justice, categorically telling the trial court judges or the district court judges that please don't be reluctant. Nobody will attack you. So if the Chief Justice of India himself gives this confidence to this, his judges, because he's the karta, he's the, he's the head of the family. If he gives this confidence to the judges, I think uh, there, there, is, there is an element of positivity and we really hope the more bails are granted at the trial court level or perhaps at the high court level and automatically uh, things will fall in place. Yes, yes. Thank you for that comment. I'd go across or... Uh... To Nearika for the round of final comments, we have about 30 for 35, 40 seconds each. Uh, your closing comment for the show, uh, ma'am. Yeah, my closing comment, Karan, is just that, especially from the perspective of criminal trials, this is a very, very welcome and exciting move. Uh, we've discussed a lot about economic offenses today, but even in other forms of offenses, this is something that happens very seriously. And as you talked about magnitude of a scam, for example, suddenly drastically changing at the time when a charge sheet is filed, I wanted to uh, bring by, uh, us back to the Aryan Khan case for a moment, where at the stage of bail, the boy was made out to be some kind of new age power. Pablo Escobar, they said he has international drug links and this and that and all sorts of things. And ultimately, no charge sheet was filed. But ultimately, what happened was the young man had to spend approximately a month in custody, something that he would not have to do. There's a real human cost to this. And bringing that human suffering cost down is really the upshot of the view that the Supreme Court is taking today. Okay, okay. we'll move on to uh, senior advocate Saurabh Kirpal. Uh, look, the point is that there is needs to be a dramatic change in our judicial system. My worry is that this statement will become just another thing that happens during the duration of Justice Chandrachu's tenure. Let us also see, as I said, how these uh, bail applications are actually uh, decided. 
and while it is true a message will go down and 100 uh, uh, 17 benches 170 matters uh, a day is quite a bit but the backlog and pendency across the country is so enormous that this will not even begin to make a dent in it and most importantly i think we need a change of mindset from the government it's all well and good we are sitting on your show and we in on legally speaking so we're bound to speak about lawyers and prosecutors but uh, who's doing the arrest it is the the agencies and at some point they must also be made to be answerable as to why is it then every case inevitably promoters are arrested or the threat of uh, arrest is is dangled upon upon their head if we want to have ease of doing business and we want investment in our country we can't be come across as a kind of banana republic where people are arrested willy-nilly okay thank you i'll move on to advocate saket sikri for his closing comment well i'll just uh, say that uh, at least for uh, the period of 2 years uh, if it becomes a norm uh, and the trial courts become uh, you know b- b- more uh, b- open to the idea of granting of bail uh, there's a positive trend and i hope it continues thank you thank you. so uh, as we saw the one good takeaway is that justice chandrachud took charge and within less than a fortnight we've seen a slew of big decisions the other being the constitution of uh, supreme court bench to hear direct and indirect tax matters the last time such a thing happened we remember was when uh, justice arjun kumar sikri and uh, justice rohinton nariman uh, had uh, uh, presided over such a bench this was about 6 uh, years ago uh, but this was the demand of the industry they wanted their matters sorted out and this is the decision that we saw uh immediately it has been very well lauded by the industry so quick to quick back to back decisions and i hope that there never be a dull moment with justice chandrachud in charge there are two more years to go and many more opportunities opportunities to debate uh we will do a follow up on this very uh topic two months from now of course then a lot many matters would have been heard uh that would be a better time to assess and talk about that but at this moment i'd like to thank uh, ma'am niarika karanjawala from karanjawala and company uh, senior advocate saurabh kirpal and advocate saket sikri for making time and joining at a short notice appreciate your time and appreciate your joining us and thank you so much viewers for tuning in thank you so very much thank you thank you For more such videos subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel hit the bell icon